You ever notice how every framework tutorial makes it sound like you're about to discover the holy grail? It's fast, it's simple, it scales forever. Yeah, until you're three years in and your code base is a haunted house of bugs nobody wants to touch. Rails is no different. In fact, it's the king of this honeymoon and heartbreak story. Rails can make you feel like a coding rock star on day one. The productivity, the shortcuts, the I can build an app before lunch vibe. It's real. But there are some landmines no one warns you about until it's too late. And trust me, you don't want to find them the hard way. Today I'm going to pull back the curtain not just the good, not just the bad, but the real stuff that decides whether Rails will be your best decision ever, or the reason you're crying over migration scripts at 2am. Alright, before we start comparing Rails to everything else out there, let's make sure we're all on the same page. Ruby on Rails, or just Rails for short, is built on the Ruby programming language. But here's the thing that really sets it apart. Rails isn't just a collection of tools, it's a whole philosophy for building web apps. The core idea is something Rails developers love to talk about, and that's convention over configuration. Rails comes with a bunch of smart defaults. It already assumes how you want to structure your app, how you name your files, and how your code should talk to the database. That means in most cases you don't have to make about a million small decisions. You just follow the conventions and Rails does the heavy lifting. Compare that to other frameworks like Express in Node.js, Django in Python, or Laravel in PHP. They give you more freedom, sure, but that freedom comes with more decisions. You have to manually wire up a lot of things together. With Rails, a lot of those decisions are made for you up front. The trade-off is less flexibility if you want to break out of the Rails way, but way faster development when you follow the path it lays out. Another thing that makes Rails unique is how opinionated it is. In Rails, the framework isn't shy about telling you how it thinks things should be done. That opinion guides you through project structure, coding patterns, and even database interactions. Some devs love this. It's like having a mentor watching over your shoulder, and others feel restricted. Either way, it's part of why Rails can feel so magical. The first time you open a Rails project, it can feel like magic. You type a few commands, and suddenly you've got a working web app with user authentication, database models, and a basic interface. And that's because Rails comes loaded with built-in tools that make prototyping insanely fast. Things like scaffolding generators and built-in ORM, which is called Active Record, mean you don't have to reinvent the wheel for every app you build. Compare that to frameworks like Express, Django, or Laravel. They give you the building blocks like Lego, and you have to assemble almost everything yourself. Laravel is closer to Rails, but even Laravel is not quite there. And the reason that this matters for developers is because following Rails philosophy leads to faster development and more maintainable code in the long run. Alright, so we've talked about the honeymoon, why developers fall in love with Rails at first, and why its philosophy is so appealing. But here's the part nobody really emphasizes in tutorials or sales pitches. Rails has some hidden downsides and they can hit hard if you're not prepared. I'm going to mention performance and scalability issues here, but just as a precursor I should say this is only going to become an issue if your app actually gets millions of users. Rails is powerful but that power comes with overhead. Because it's opinionated and does a lot of things automatically, your app carries extra baggage under the hood. And for small to medium apps it's fine, but when traffic spikes into the millions of users, Rails can start to feel sluggish compared to lighter frameworks. However, it's definitely still possible to scale Rails as you can just look at Shopify and see how they're doing things. The magic can also become a trap. Remember when I said Rails is full of smart defaults? Those defaults are amazing, but as your app grows they can make debugging tricky. For example, Rails's active record automates database queries, but sometimes those queries are inefficient, and tracking down the source of a performance issue can feel like detective work. That same convenience that boosted your productivity early on can slow you down later. And the third thing is version hell. Rails evolves fast. The version you depend on today might be incompatible with the next Rails release. Upgrading can be painful, especially for large projects. This isn't unique to Rails, but because it's so heavily gem driven, it's something you'll encounter sooner rather than later. And finally, the opinionated structure is a learning curve if you deviate. Rails loves guiding you, but if you break its rules or implement something unconventional, it fights back. Do you want to use a non-standard database or structure your app differently? Be ready for frustration. Now that we've unpacked the highs and lows of Rails, it's time to look at the flip side. What other frameworks do better and why some devs choose them over Rails. First, let's talk flexibility. These other frameworks give you more control over how your app is structured. They're also more lightweight, so you can only include the modules you need, which does make it faster for high traffic applications right out of the box. There's usually more modern developer ecosystems, for instance Node.js and its NPM packages give you huge flexibility and instant integration with front-end stacks like React or Vue. Django has Python's extensive libraries for data science and machine learning, something Rails does not emphasize. Another advantage is easier onboarding for certain developers. If your team already knows JavaScript, Python or PHP, it's faster to pick Express, Django or Laravel. Rails requires learning Ruby plus the Rails conventions. While Ruby is really really elegant, not every dev wants to learn a new language just to use a framework. Alright, we've explored why Rails is magical at first and how other frameworks can sometimes outshine it. But here's the part most Rails tutorials don't tell you. Long term maintenance can be tricky. This is mainly because Rails relies heavily on third party gems to add features. Over time, gems
systems are going to stop being maintained or they're going to conflict with rails upgrades or they're going to require tweaks to get everything working also the opinionated structure can become restrictive so when your app grows you might want to do things differently like custom database designs unconventional workflows or specialized apis team onboarding and knowledge transfer can be tricky rails magic is amazing if your devs already know the conventions but if someone new joins who isn't experienced in ruby on rails they'll get lost all right now let's get into something every startup founder and dev lead thinks about but rarely talks about in rails tutorials cost and team considerations first developer availability and salaries because rails devs are as rare as gold itself there's a much smaller talent pool but they often have way higher salaries there's definitely a higher learning curve and the maintenance cost over time might not be the most optimal because of upgrading gems refactoring legacy code optimizing performance it can all be resource intensive rails shines for mvps and medium-sized applications because of its productivity but if your project is massive highly specialized or expected to scale to millions of users quickly the team is going to need to invest in additional infrastructure performance tuning and monitoring so who is rails actually for startups or small teams building mvps teams that value productivity over ultimate flexibility projects with moderate complexity and traffic e-commerce platforms SaaS products or cms systems who should avoid rails projects requiring extreme performance or massive concurrency highly unconventional architectures or teams without ruby expertise so the key takeaways for this video is that rails excels in productivity and conventions long-term maintenance and scaling requires planning other frameworks have advantages in flexibility performance and talent pool and choosing rails is about fit and not hype if your team has ruby experience your app aligns with the rails conventions and you value speed of development over ultimate flexibility rails is the perfect match all right guys like this video if it gave you clarity on rails versus other frameworks comment below and tell me your experience thank you guys for watching and i'll see you in the next one